guys, it's Madison here with my husband Riley and you are watching the Cruel World podcast or listening if you're on Spotify or Apple. And today is going to be our very first podcast episode. We're so excited but nervous. Super fun. Yeah, yeah, this is our first time, so it might be a little rocky as we get used to it, but we're really excited. If this is the first thing that you've ever seen from both of us and you didn't know my name is Madison. I run a YouTube channel called Cruel World Happy Mind where I dive into scams and unethical business practices, but there's been a lot of topics that I've wanted to cover further and even more in depth, but just haven't had the time. And I wanted to get into a project that I worked on with my husband, so we both decided it'd be a fun thing to start a podcast together and that's where Cruel World Podcast came about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're just going to take this like one video at a time. We'll see how it goes. You know, maybe it'll blow up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It'll be super cool to see the progress that this takes. We'll just get into our video. Yeah, it's kind of, it's like a passion project. You know, we're just doing things that are fun, that seem interesting to us. And uh, hopefully it's interesting to some other people too. And uh, yeah, if you enjoy this type of content, if you want, definitely give suggestions for topics that you'd like to see us cover. And also don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel if you're watching on YouTube. And today's video is going to be on Gary Young, the founder of Young Living, a multi-level marketing essential oil company that I'm sure most of you guys know about. It's one of the most infamous essential oil companies out there. And I think Gary Young is equally infamous as well and just has a crazy, really fascinating story that I personally wanted to dive into. Um, my husband did such great research wow. on this and so spent much. a lot of hours. So we're so excited to really dive into the story of Gary Young and all of that. And Riley's going to start off with that. So I guess let's just get into it. Okay. Yeah, so Donald Gary Young, as many of you guys know, very controversial man. There is a whole side of followers that just like absolutely adore this guy. Just always do what Gary Young says or marry his third wife. Um, you know, he's a founder of Young Living Essential Oils. It's a multi-level marketing oil company making all these bizarre claims talking about oh, I can cure cancer, or oh, I can cure depression, everything. The list goes on and on. But to understand how this all happened, we have to go take it back all the way to the back, like mm -hmm. all the way to like the very birth of Gary Young in <laughs> the, the, beginning. In the 50s. <laughs> oh yeah. my gosh. So Donald Gary Young was born in a ranching family in Idaho in 1949, and lived a kind of substandard life with no electricity, no water, and was raised in a Mormon household. Are we really that surprised? Makes sense. Interestingly, a ton of MLM companies and their founders all either originate in Utah or they're part of kind of the Mormon religion. I find that really fascinating. He, you know, lived his childhood, graduated high school, and began logging at 18 years old in 1967. And as far as we know, he liked logging, he liked that career path, and started pursuing homesteading in the British Columbia. Along this career, he met his first wife, Donna, Donna Jean, and married her in 1968. They quickly had their first child, Becky, followed by their second, Troy, both around the mid-60s, and everything changed when Donald Gary Young had his fatal, had his near-fatal experience while logging in 1973. Fatal? Like, Not uh, he fatal. died. Yeah. <laughs> Not but fatal, but continues. nearly. <laughs> so basically, he... While he was logging, he had a really serious accident in 1973 when he was 24 years old. While Donald Gary Young was logging, he suffered an accident that allegedly resulted in a fractured skull, multiple broken vertebrae, 17 broken bones, and paralysis. That is a lot of stuff. A, I don't even understand how you could survive something like that. Broken pretty, bones, vertebrae. Jeez. Yeah. It's a pretty hefty accident. Yeah, I know even vertebrae, that's really serious. 
So this is when everything took a turn for the worst. His third wife, Mary, who we'll get into a little bit later, wrote that when Gary Young suffered this life-threatening accident, he had lost all hope in living and unfortunately had attempted suicide three different times, with the final attempt being through starvation, through just consuming lemon water or water with lemon juice in it. What his wife, Mary, wrote as well, his third wife, was that Donald Gary Young attempted suicide, but started experimenting at the same time with alternative medicine and therapy. And a part of this alternative medicine and therapy was also consuming lemon water or water with lemon juice, which is a little bit confusing. There's kind of different accounts, some saying that the lemon water was a way for Donald Gary Young to attempt suicide, and others say that It was a way for him to practice alternative medicine as a sort of cure. Though I will say, I'm sure when you get into a serious accident like that, you probably are conflicted between looking for ways to help you, um, to help yourself and, you know, losing hope. So apparently Donald Gary Young or D. Gary Young, as his followers call him, drank lemon water for 250 days which supposedly, according to his third wife, led to his miraculous recovery from being paralyzed for 27 months. This discovery of lemon juice and water aided in Don's thought process that conventional medicine practices were false and he did not trust medical establishments because supposedly just lemon water had cured his paralysis. Mm, Cures me every day. (laughs) Hi, a little cat though. (laughs) We have a full audience with us. Yeah, got the, the cats will probably... and Goofy in the back watching. Yeah, the cats will probably enjoy it. So this is definitely a conflicting story, and there isn't really one single story that seems to be an underlying truth. It seems like some people say that the lemon water was, you know, a way for Gary Young to starve himself, and others say it was a cured that helped his paralysis so that's really interesting started walking through lemons Mm -hmm. mary then wrote that in 1975 don young quit the logging scene and went on to studying different forms of alternative medicines and started to educate himself on it through reading books that's all fine and dandy and everything but you know after digging around finding all these different documents i stumbled upon an actual court document from the Spokane. Spokane? I think so. Yeah, Spokane, because I remember yeah. reading some that said Spokane. Spokane. Okay. I always want to say Spokane. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. But anyways, a Spokane court district document from 1983 stating that it was only partially true what Mary has written. Basically, Mary, a lot of what she says is a very embellished story of Donald Gary Young, and there isn't a ton of truth to it. So... What is the truth? So, as I pull it up right here, according to the court document, which will provide all the all the references for you guys to look about too, um, says that Don Gary Young was only in a wheelchair and crutches for four months, and during his recovery and physical therapy, he started to complete uh, nutrition herbal uh, herbology. <laughs> yeah. 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 And other alternative practices, December of 1973. So, like, the guy was only... (laughs) In a wheelchair wheelchair and crunches for four four months. months. Oh, my gosh. So, this whole entire storyline of him... You have to wonder if he even fractured his skull and vertebrae. I think he just, like, rolled his ankle or something. Because a wheelchair and crutches for four months, and then to to take that and turn it into this nearly fatal accident where he he was you know just almost had no hope of living and then used lemon water and cured lemon himself. juice and water which we'll get into that later on it's actually like one of Gary Young's like early practices and one of his like diplomas that he um he got in, he was able to receive um, mm-hmm. we'll get into that later but anyways, you know, he starts dabbling around in alternative medicine practices. And this can be backed up because this is when he started to do, like, bath bursts, which we'll get into later. And his first te- test subject, or child, Sean, 1973, was the first, um, first kid that he 
birth through bath, you know, the so, whirlpool baths. Yeah, so he became fascinated in bath births or yeah, whirlpool I mean, he, baths. He, he basically did anything that didn't involve conventional medicine practices, yeah. which it's okay to like do bath births i mean i've read about yeah, it you know a lot, a lot of people, people do it yeah but the way that this man does it is not <laughs> to standard just um, yeah and and so so what you said is he tested his first bath births on his own children yeah i mean i just see his kids as test subjects oh my gosh oh. <laughs> crazy cats yeah okay. so this is when he starts like experimenting like on oh, his children on his own kids wow so so basically like after this happens this is in 1973 sean was born his second child daughter tammy born around 1978 like late 1970s um around the same time that he supposedly got injured mm -hmm. is when he began these birthing bath practices mm -hmm. on his own children yep and that was just like just like the beginning this is when he's not like opening like oh young living essential his medical practices that he has he actually goes back to work like a year or so later to become not a logger this time but a trucker for oh, the wow. Brit yeah for the british columbia uh driving routes for like, the bc and alaskan pipeline still kind of in the trade but not actually uh logging anymore so the timeline that Mary, his third wife, provided of this entire portion of his life is she wasn't even not there for accurate it. at all. I mean, they got married in the 90s. Yeah. You know, and this stuff happened 20 years ago yeah. with his first wife, Donna. But so. even so, it just doesn't seem accurate. You know, he was only in a wheelchair for four months. Mm -hmm. He, you know, didn't go right into alternative medicine practice after that, but dabbled around in a few different jobs. But, of course, you know, had enough time to deliver his own children in a bath. In a bath. <laughs> okay, interesting. Fun stuff. So he's going about his life, and in 1979, Gary uh, Young uh, had another injury resulting in him selling his cargo truck just like basically just stopping everything that he's doing he's just like i'm not going to do this anymore i'm going to focus on alternative medicines and that's when he went to his first actual school well not actual it was unaccredited called the burroughs vita flex institute institute of sacramento california so i personally i think my theory on donald gary young and this entire part of his life is I think he had a fascination with medicine, but also a fascination mm -hmm. with him bringing about some sort of cure or new medicine practice. Right. And, Trying to find know, like a like a different way to do things. So yeah. Like, oh, this is the revolution. This is how I do. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of it was ego fueled, and you know he wanted to be that guy. Totally. And um, I do think that he did get into some sort of accident that probably sparked his interest yeah, with totally. medicine and all of this. And so he kind of, you know, decided these other jobs just weren't, you know, fueling that need for him to be, you know, almost worshipped. And he wanted to go and actually study and find, mm -hmm. you know, ways to be this new, you know, alternative medicine practice guy. Totally. And this led to his first school. No, I'm, I'm just going to call it the Bros Institute because it's such a long name. What's the full this, name, though? So it was, uh, let's see, it was the Bros Vita Flex Institute. And this was based in Sacramento, California. Um, this taught practices of nutrition, reflexology, color therapy, and other teaches, teachings from um, the infamous Stanley Burrow, which is a total whack job. You know, I'll get into him right now. Uh, Stanley Burrow isn't brought up enough, and Gary Ye uh, Gary Young's <laughs> <laughs> Gary the funny um, Gary Young's videos, you know, like his history, people trying to dis like show how this guy came about. Stanley Burrow is pretty much the guy that started created, created Gary, Young. Gary Young. Yeah. So Stanley Burrow is the author of The Master Cleanser and Healing for the Age of Enlightenment, both separate books uh, published around the 70s. Funny enough, this Master Cleanser book is a book that goes into healing through um, lemon juice and water. So you can see kind of the correlation be mm -hmm. between the two. 
Do you so. think that Gary Young knew about Stanley Burrow totally. back when he did the oh, lemon yeah. water thing? Oh, yeah. yeah, he was totally reading kind about of, him at the time. Yeah, maybe you just don't wake to. up one day and like, oh, I want to commit suicide by drinking lemon juice and water. Yeah. It doesn't really add up. Interesting. Yeah, so I wonder if maybe he developed this fascination with Stanley Burrow and mm-hmm. this kind of figure who's creating all of these cool practices exactly. and wanted to kind of be like him. And so he went to his institute, mm-hmm. the... Uh, Burroughs Vita Flex Institute to kind of learn how to be like Stanley Burroughs. Sounds like a juice bar. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> or a, like really, um, it reminds you of like a gym for it some does. reason. It does. Vita, Vita Flex. Flex. Vita yeah. Flex. <laughs> um, sorry if you guys or um, your drums were bursted from that. I don't know how loud it was. But fun fact about Stanley Burrow is that he was convicted, convicted of a second degree murder um, in a felony charge for practicing his medicine teachings. You know, of course, this guy isn't like fully licensed, but he was doing these um, these experiments, these treatments on a bunch of cancer patients and whatnot, and one of them was murdered or killed, died, um, from the mistreatment that he was using on her. So I think that's where, you know, a, a huge topic in this video is practicing medicine without a license versus alternative medicine practices Mm -hmm. and spreading that of course when things don't have extensive studies it's always a little bit sketchy for someone to be recommending it but i think that where stuff becomes a hundred percent illegal is if you're claiming that your alternative medicine practice can cure someone or help them with their ailment and you're you're making all of these claims and making yourself out to be some expert in all of this and in reality, there's there's no validity to that, and a lot of people can get seriously hurt, which, as you'll see in this story, a lot of people really did, mm-hmm. and that's when it becomes really, really wrong and really illegal, and not just making false claims, especially right. when you're practicing on them. Mm-hmm. And the mess up thing, too, is that you know, people who are desperate enough, like if you have cancer and you're going through chemo, you're not getting any results, you're going to resort to the most extensive, you know, ends of the earth to get yourself better, get your family members better, you know, anything to do. But this is pretty much, you know, the peak of uh, Gary Young's like full polar plunge, 50 foot jump dive into alternative his alternative practices. Medicine. Yeah. Which... Yeah. So between the years of 1979 to 1981, Gary Young, or Don Young, started going to a list of unaccredited schools of medicine, such as the Vita Flex, started by Stanley mm-hmm. Burroughs, as previously mentioned, as well as Don's Baugh Nutrition University, and receiving his doctorate in naturopathy from the Bernadine University, which was a diploma mill. So Gary Young went to a bunch of different schools, but none of them were accredited. They weren't, it wasn't any sort of medicine school. It wasn't, even this degree in naturopathy was from a diploma mill. So it seemed like he was constantly trying to find this way to like cheat the system. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So the fact that Gary Young received an eight-year doctorate in only two or so years is impressive, right? What a remarkable figure. Oh my god. This guy. (laughs) It's funny that a portion of Gary Young's colleges he went to were either non-accredited and held no value in the medical world, and the teachers of the programs themselves have received charges or been arrested for operating without a license or practicing medicine without a license. So, great. (laughs) That's what a... (laughs) What an impressive uh, schooling and educational history. <laughs> it's amazing that in the midst of attending these colleges in Sacramento and Huntington Beach, California, Gary Young had the time to take his wife and at the time five kids, including his third and fourth water bo- waterborne baby, that is a tongue twister, mm-hmm. Jared and Matthew, born between 1980 and 1982 to Spokane, Washington, and opened a nutrition center with his wife Donna in the same time as his studies in the 1980s. So while he was simultaneously studying, not really, medicine and all of this, he 
simultaneously opened up a medicine clinic and throughout this entire time was doing water bath births of all of his children, which is really interesting because there's the infamous water baby birth uh, story that we'll get into about Gary Young, but something I didn't know personally is that all of his children were water birth water bath babies he he claimed that four out of his six kids four out of six were water wow we're just gonna call them water babies but yeah it's really interesting and it just seems like you know there wasn't really any concern that he was actually prepared to practice medicine i don't think he really cared about his preparedness because it seemed like he was really pulling all of this stuff out of his arse if you know what i mean his buttocks (laughs) yeah so (laughs) I don't think, you know, he was just really wanting to get as much fake, um, you know, authority established as possible, totally. fake, you know, degrees and everything so that he could have this establishment of I'm an expert in naturopathy and, um, you know, alternative medicine. All these and, fancy words. Yeah. You have and to get people going. Exactly. You know? And the final goal was definitely to open this clinic in Spokane, Washington. So the funny thing is, he did actually go to a real community college, which was the American Institute of Physioregionology. Something like that. Yeah, Yeah. I I probably did not (laughs) pronounce that right. Which no one really knows what that is, because whenever you search it, basically just Gary Young pops up. On Google, not much information on physioregionology. Something like that. And it's said by the founder of this institute, Mike Mayer, that Gary Young dropped out shortly after enrolling and failed pretty much all of his classes and had no shows and didn't pay for tuition. So I don't think he wanted to actually, yeah, he didn't want to actually do the work to educate himself. He just wanted to have as many, you know, badges as possible so that he could get into what he was really interested in, which seemed to be water births and really bizarre medical testings and experiments taking money out of his customers pockets you know (laughs) that's that's my motive (laughs) not my motivation his motivation jeez um so let's just do like a little backtrack you know just so if we're going too fast we're just going to give you there's so much information yeah it's crazy um so gary young born 1949 in idaho Graduates college. Starts logging by... College? <laughs> graduated high school, my bad. <laughs> graduated high school and started logging by age 18, around 1967, okay? He moved to Canada to do homestead and logging, and he met his first wife, Donna, which he had his first three kids with. <laughs> One of his first three wives uh, in 1968, and they got married. He had two normal hospital-born kids in the 60s. He got smacked by a log or something. You know, he, he rolled his ankle. Not much information. Paralyzed, <laughs> but wait, he didn't. Um, you know, he, his third wife, Mary, claims that he was depressed, tried killing himself, um, paralyzed for 27 months, and healed himself through a magical blend of lemon juice and water. Okay. And doctors are just like, oh, wow, 27 months paralyzed and you cured yourself. That's amazing. But according to Spokane, docu- uh, Spokane documents uh, from the court, said that um, Gary Young was paralyzed for only four months. And he started, uh, that's when he started um, going about alternative medicine practices and completed a home study and nutrition, herbology, and other alternative practices around December of 1973. With these studies, he birthed his first and second waterborne children. And while, um, while, while this, he was still looking in the raw trade by, you know, driving a truck t- through Canada, British Columbia, um, and the Alaskan pipeline. Until 1979, he injured himself again where he said, I'm done with this, I'm going to go pursue my fake medical degrees um, around the 80s, and that's when he picked up all his kids, his wife Donna, first wife, and moved to Spokane, Washington. Cool. On track? All right. So. (laughs) That makes sense? Yes. So there's a clinic in Spokane that Gary Young started, and we are in the year 1982. 
where Gary Young is running his first herb and other alternative practice shop. He was known to do a series of unethical practices, such as blood sample crystallization, to determine if you have cancer or not, which apparently, to most cases, if you go through Gary Young, you always have cancer. Some surprise, crazy. surprise. Yeah. And Gary Young also offered his infamous birthing services. So basically, the two main services that Gary Young offered at his clinic were cancer testing through mm-hmm. blood crystallization and water water birthing services. And the four times that he had done this water birthing service, apparently it had been okay and he was an expert and people were like, everything was fine. Except for a really tragic incident that happened in September of 1982. Gary Young was due to deliver his seventh child. Seventh child. Wow. wow. Rachel, who died of cardiac arrest because Gary Young kept her underwater for more than an hour during an underwater birth or a water birth. I said whirlpool bath, but... Whirlpool bath, yeah. yeah. Okay. When this was brought up in local newspapers and investigation, it was said from the investigator that the baby could have survived if they weren't held underwater for more than an hour. And if she were to be delivered in a normal and conventional practice, like going to a hospital for delivery or even doing a water bath birth with someone Just taking a baby who out, didn't hold yeah. on to them underwater. Oh no! Oh, it's a really tragic incident and one of the most um, egregious things that Gary Young has done that I know a lot of people have spoken up about. Shout out to Savannah Marie, Illuminati, all of those YouTube channels who have covered this portion. Unfortunately, Gary Young wasn't charged for his child's death, but this incident did lead him to being held under the microscope a little closer from authorities. In February of 1983, police launched an investigation trying to prove that Gary Young was running his health club without a license and making false claims about being able to cure patients of cancer through blood samples and that he could come up with a dietary plan for ladies who are pregnant by taking blood samples as well. Really, really odd um, Which is bizarre. Categories. I mean, I'm pretty yeah. sure if you mess up with a diet plan for a pregnant woman, oh, you know, so many things so could dangerous. happen. Like, oh, yeah. he probably just suggests, like, oh, drink lemon juice and water. Yeah, yeah, really, really dangerous. And just bizarre focuses for someone that has a background as a logger and truck driver yeah, to yeah. all of a sudden be like, birthing and cancer yeah. are my two focuses in life. I heal with oils. <laughs> yeah. Once investigators received all they needed, they arrested Don Young and gave him a one-year probation for practicing medicine without a license. And they ordered him to not practice medicine of any sort and 60 days in Spokane jail. Now, I know that a lot of frustration is around this because Gary Young really overall in his entire just criminal history did not receive that much jail time. I mean, it really has a lot to say about privilege. When you're claiming you're a doctor, you're claiming you have all of these cures and just really genuinely harming people. You killed your own daughter and the most that you've ever spent in jail is 60 days. And you go on to start a like multi-million dollar company. So bizarre. It's it's you know really really unfair for. And I know a lot of people are really upset about that. But the funniest thing is, even though the jail time kind of you know uh, made his practice a little bit difficult at that time. Later on, it really seems like with Young Living, this whole entire criminal history and all of that had no effect on the Young Living followers and people who were really devoted to Gary Young and Young Living. After the death of their daughter, Donna, Gary's wife at the time, took all six of their children back to the British Columbia and filed for divorce, which I had no idea. Mm -hmm. So apparently, I always had wondered that whether or not how, you know, 
Donna was kind of in on this whole thing and believed in Gary and did thought that it was an accident or whether or not she was pissed because oh, yeah. I would be pissed I mean, and upset. I can't even imagine. She did file for divorce. So I'm pretty sure yeah. that was the leading cause. That was the it. last straw. I'm sure, yeah. you know, yeah. um, yeah, especially, so it sounds like, you know, at least Donna is intelligent and knows what's going on. I mean, she saw Gary from the beginning. You know, he went from being a logger and truck driver to all of a sudden being like, let me deliver your babies. And so, I yeah. Read a book. <laughs> the, so the death of their daughter was definitely the last, the last straw from her. And she took the children back to British Columbia, filed for divorce, and... Uh, you know, Gary had to pay her $900 a month in child support. So around the early 80s, when they filed for divorce, so this was around the early 80s when they filed for divorce, because in 1983, Gary left Spokane and moved to San Diego, California to open a vitamin shop of some sort that sold stuff like supplements, mouthwash, And other things that you'd see in Trader Joe's or your favorite, you know, local natural health store. Just like natural supplements and stuff and other Mm -hmm. bizarre things. Mm -hmm. So, and this was while he was still under probation for the Spokane incidents of practicing medicine without a license. He also sold Burroughs books, the, you know, his mentor, I guess. the lemon juice. Yeah, Yeah, the lemon juice cleanser um guy that yeah. <laughs> that it seems to be the person that inspired Gary Young yes. the most um he went further with it and ended up opening a bizarre medical clinic called Rosarita Beach Clinic in Tijuana, Mexico. He thought he could kind of, you know, skirt around like, this probation, oh, but You only said that I can pra- I can't practice in the states. I'm going to yeah. go in Mexico, which yeah. if you don't if no one's ever been to like California or live in California, San Diego and Tijuana are like an hour drive away. Yeah. So it's pretty close to like have your health store in San Diego and have your crazy bizarre health you know, world world of No way crap and see that's Tijuana. just kind of psychotic if you think about it because mm-hmm. during the day kind of you know it's like this double dual life type of thing where during the day or whatever <laughs> he ran his you know natural health store in san yeah. diego no medical practices here cops mm. like i'm just a normal guy yeah, an and then he drive. just drove an hour <laughs> drive south and did his medical chopping up people and stuff and yeah where it was just in when you get into the medical experimentations that he conducted in his tijuana clinic it's disturbing and i thought that he lived there but in actuality he was still in the united states living in san diego just driving to mexico so that he technically wasn't operating a medical practice without a medical license in the united states which it's just so so wrong So his clinic, in that Tijuana clinic, he did practices such as bioelectrical cell activator therapy. Not All of these just sound like mumbo jumbo. Blood crystallization tests, live cell analysis, detoxification programs, and administering IVs and intramuscular injections of vitamins, minerals, and thymus extracts. Oh my goodness. It's really creepy, it's all so, of those. So bizarre. So creepy. And <laughs> and it's just so weird to think that the whole time he was trying to live this normal life in San Diego oh, no. as some sort of shop owner. And then, you know, behind the scenes, he was doing this in Tijuana, S- Mexico. Still getting at it. What drives you to constantly, like, know that you're screwing people over? Yeah. The, the government told you, like, hey. Don't do this. Don't do this or you're going to be in big trouble. <laughs> But he felt such a need to practice on people and, you know, to drive to a whole different country just to do all of these unproven, really dangerous experiments on people. Mm -hmm. He had this really weird need to do this. Investigators were kind of aware that Young was doing this, so they did a little undercover work that ended up leading to his second arrest. And here is the investigation from 1987 that was published in the LA Times. And this stuff is fascinating. This is a pretty hefty story. It's pretty hilarious, too. Yeah. 
So as you know, one of the main practices that Gary claimed he could do was this blood crystallization test where he would have you send in blood samples and say whether or not you have cancer. And as we said earlier, majority of people happen to have cancer and, you know, of course, need his treatments to help cure it. So the LA Times decided to do a little bit more investigation into this. So they sent their blood samples to this Tijuana lab. And how it works is the patient is directed to puncture the little finger of each hand and make five blood spots on a slide, one for the left hand and one for the right. The sliders are then mailed along with $60 to the clinic for diagnosis. So he was still testing people in the United States yeah. in this Tijuana clinic. The only just, difference was that it was in Mexico. Yeah, and not in so America. he couldn't get charged with it. <laughs> what a scammer. Um, so a Times reporter prepared two slides using blood from not a human, but a seven-year-old 20-pound tabby cat named Boomer wow. that belongs to the Glendale veterinarian Ahmed Kalek. The slides were presented at the clinic by the reporter who identified himself as a prospective patient. So this reporter is like, here's my blood, mm -hmm. but reality is it's a seven-year-old cat, 20-pound oh. cat. Can't wait to so, see what happens. <laughs> so Sharon Reynolds, the health educator at the Tijuana Clinic, who also casts horoscopes for patients at $50 each, examined the slides under a microscope that projects an image on a television monitor. She said she found evidence of aggressive cancer in the cells as well as liver problems. Shocking. Yeah. Um, funny, she didn't mention that this was a cat's blood. No, she just... No, she just said it's cancer. She and, just assumed it's from a human, too. And just assumed it was a human. You must have suspected something, she said, gazing up with sorrowful eyes, as the LA Times Sounds claims. like a soap opera. The reporter said he had not suspected anything and suggested that another blood crystallization test be conducted that same day. This time, his own blood was used instead of the cat's just to see if the same results would come back or different considering one is blood from a cat and one is blood from not only a different like being but an entirely different species. Oh my gosh. So, <laughs> and this time his own blood was used and Reynolds found signs of latent cancer but no evidence of aggressive cancer. She said that liver dysfunction was still evident, as well as pancreas and thyroid problems. Some pretty intense stuff. In her report, she also said that there are elevated levels of toxicity that must be reduced in order to, to promote assimilation, increase oxygenation, and prevent degeneration. Oh my gosh, where are you going to Who's do it? What's it? <laughs> preserve my whole body or something? Like, your body naturally... It's so bizarre. Degenerates. <laughs> of course, you know, the only way to cure this cancer is to use the clinic's own special program. It's you the know? only way. You can't see a doctor. Mm -hmm. You can't do anything. You mm -hmm. have to pay $2,000 yes. a week in advance. Exactly. Um, so the detox of what, what? the detoxification program at the clinic, which consists of colonics... We love colonics. Oh yeah, colonics. so effective. The they're uh, <laughs> the, the col colonics. Uh, they're um, like yes, and butt stuff. <laughs> yeah, and wow. they're um, you know people like Gwyneth Paltrow are huge oh, proponents okay, of it, okay. as well as Madonna apparently, hey, which is that. disappointing. The more you know. <laughs> and it also consists of a special diet and various nostrums with a cost of $2,000 per week. Payable in advance, of course, in advance. So you don't know that you have cancer yet? You just have to pay $2,000? So you do, apparently, because of the blood crystallization program, the, um, you know, the clinic lady is like, yep, that's cancer. And the only way to cure it is through our $2,000 a week naturopathy program. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. 
I wonder how many people they actually scammed with this. Yes. Because like, like logically you'd be like, oh damn, I have cancer. I should probably go to a medical place, like an actual medical establishment to see if they test for that. Which Or do multiple tests or anything. Yeah, totally. But I think, you know, people like Gary, they're they're predators in a lot of way. They know how they know what people are afraid of. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of people are afraid of Western medicine. They don't trust yeah. it. Yeah. You know, um, I think what happens, at least my personal theory on it, is we're all told, you know, we're all kind of taught to believe that Western medicine is super advanced and super well studied and super effective but the reality is it's not going to cure everything it's not going to help everyone and sometimes people slip through the cracks and i think that Mm -hmm. when you have a bad experience with western medicine uh it it shatters this belief of western medicine being helpful at all and you start to just distrust doctors distrust hospitals and all of that especially with the high bills that a lot of people can't afford yeah and like health insurance yeah like not even covers most of it yeah so it leads them down this path of um pursuing naturopathy and alternative medicine as a, a you know alternative and uh, it, that leads them to trusting people like Gary who really don't have their best interests in mind. So anyways, continuing on, besides this whole $2,000 a week program, an at-home program is also available for $90 plus $400 worth of vitamins and supplements that Young sold through his San Diego uh, wow. <laughs> store. It's crazy how the connection just connection's just, crazy. It works also, out. it works out two thousand dollar a week <laughs> or just ninety dollars from my California store. Yeah, sorry, I just ninety dollars plus four hundred dollars worth of vitamins through this San Diego yeah. store. It's, Jeez, which one? That that's so weird that they recommended both. I forgot what it's called, but psychology trick. It's a sales tactic. Yeah, yeah. it's a sales tactic where you like shock someone with how expensive something is so you think oh my gosh two thousand dollars sets the bar high yeah then they're like or you could pay four hundred dollars plus ninety dollars yeah like oh it makes so much more sense in reality you're still getting money to a a con artist yeah you're still exactly you're still getting money to a con artist but you're thinking well instead of paying two thousand dollars a week i'll Mm -hmm. buy these vitamins they're saying that this is a sure thing you know but but it's interesting also just thinking about how they intentionally structured this so that the San Diego company can't get heat because the San Diego company that's selling all of these vitamins aren't making the cure, the, the, these claims for cures and everything. Mm-hmm. It's the Tijuana Clinic that's saying buy from this place yeah. and, uh, you know, your cancer will be cured. Um, your fake cancer will be cured. And so that's what's really interesting about it is they... They crafted this whole system to skirt around U.S. regulations and mm-hmm. laws, and it's really fascinating. I could just picture it. I remember seeing it from a cartoon scene one time where, like, I could just picture Gary Young in Mexico, okay? He sees his client there, and Gary Young is like, okay, here's all the stuff that you need to buy from this particular shop. And it's like undisclosed shop. So the person goes from Mexico to the San Diego shop, and they see Gary Young again, like, oh, hey. Yeah. And like What's a completely up? different yeah. outfit and stuff. Like, yeah. oh, you need this? Oh, uh, that's how I see it. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of comical. Literally, if you ask me. literally a con man. I mean, no, yeah. especially when you look at this, that the uh, that the Rosarita Beach Clinic diagnosed chicken blood, which is completely different in shape and structure to human blood, as if it was from from a human. And the clinic's report said that chicken blood had inflammation in the liver and is indicating the possibility of a pre-lymphomic condition. That's so bizarre. Did they even look at this? Yeah. Well, they obviously have no knowledge in blood or anything. I just want to see something real quick. Let's pull up a picture of chicken blood compared to human blood. Mm -hmm. While he's doing that, you know... It just overall, it just shows they're complete scam artists. They know nothing about blood or diagnosing in any way, shape, or form. And all of it, the the blood crystallization diagnosis is just a way to get people roped into buying their programs or vitamins or anything. And it's really, really sinister. 
especially the tactics that they use and employ to rope people in. And you can kind of see how that has evolved into Young Living and their recruitment practices and the way that they spread false claims. It's the same thing. Very similar. So that's bird. That's like chicken blood. And that's human blood. There's a specific difference. There's a whole ass it black so outline different. in the black center wow. compared to human blood, which has no inside or nucleus. I don't know how blood yeah, works. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That's really crazy. I I could recognize that. And mm-hmm. I mean, I'll put I'll put a picture up, but it's pretty easy to yeah. tell. Which so, is which. yeah, so the LA Times, just to do a little further investigation <laughs> to see, well, would an actual health professional make these same mistakes? They Not just brought... a health professional, like a hematologist, someone yeah. that's yeah, specializing exactly. in blood. Exactly. Uh-huh. So they brought that blood to Dr. Farmaraz Naim. I'm so sorry, I probably pronounced that wrong. Who's the head of hemato- hematopathology, also probably said that wrong, at the <laughs> UCLA Medical Center. And immediately he just looked at it and was like, is this human blood? It looks like chicken blood. <laughs> immediately. Whoa. Who would have thought? <laughs> he also, Naeem also said that the blood slides used for valid diagnostic purposes must be thinly smeared and stained so that individual cells can be clearly seen under a microscope, which obviously the clinic in Tijuana yeah. did not specify. Just looking like a little vial of yeah. blood and they're like, oh, they they made it that. seem <laughs> as if it's this professional process and made it oh, seem no. as if it's similar to actual blood diagnosis, but in reality, it just it I, didn't have. Yeah, I doubt that they even looked at the blood. I'm pretty sure they had a dice. They rolled the dice on the floor. I was like, oh. <laughs> You have, you know, that's a six, six equals cancer. You have cancer. Yeah. (laughs) You know? Naeem just said, basically, because the drops of blood clotted together, they're just drops of clotted blood, and you can't really make a definitive diagnosis. And to the whole, the, and to the clinic's diagnosis in Tijuana, Naeem basically said, this is just garbage. It contains words and terminology without making much sense. It's crazy. So that, so basically from this LA Times article, you can see that the Tijuana Clinic is just absolute bullshit. Nothing's going on. Um, It's not a legitimate health practice and they're probably scamming so many people and putting so many people at risk. Mm Mm-hmm. So this whole scam between uh, San Diego and Tijuana's practices led to a file complaint against um, Gary Young, allegedly saying that it's unfair, deceptive, untrue, misleading, which is overall unlawful, unlawful, because Gary Young sold and manufactured unapproved medical devices, drugs, and advertised that he could pretty much cure any disease. And... Just total like, con man. Total, oh, totally, con man. totally. And according to the court records, medical professionals also debunked Young's practices. Of course, the head of UCLA, blood scientist yeah. man, you know, said that this is complete and utter bullcrap. Yeah. You know? He literally said this is batshit crazy. <laughs> no way. So, of course, this led to Gary Young's second lawsuit, with the previous one being from the Spokane incident. So around the same time of this lawsuit, you know, Gary V, Gary Young, <laughs> <laughs> I get them mixed up. I mean, they're pretty much the same guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so around his, this second lawsuit, Gary Young had received a third lawsuit, you know, because third time's a charm. You know, hopefully he'll stop doing what he's doing. <laughs> and this was brought from a former Rosarita Beach Clinic employee allegedly saying that he gave Young and his second wife at the time because between that divorce between the 80s and late 80s, Gary Young um, actually had a second wife, which isn't really brought up much, but yeah. he was married and she was participating in the San Diego and Tijuana wow. clinic. so she was actively participating mm-hmm. in the second wife. And I don't think her name's really mentioned no, anywhere. I, I tried searching for it. You know, if you know her name, just like leave in the comments. Yeah. But basically... This employee gave Gary Young and his second wife a hundred thousand dollars, intended for clinical purposes, but to develop the Tijuana Clinic. Mm-hmm. 
but it was said that they just kept it for personal use. Lovely. I mean, a hundred grand in the eighties, that's a lot that's of a money. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Wow. What horrible people, honestly. Mm-hmm. So basically this claim led one after another, you know, saying that there were no insurance payments. Um, they just really didn't care about mm-hmm. doing anything legally or by the book. If someone gave them money for a business, they took it. If they had to pay insurance, they didn't. Yeah. They did not care just about legitimacy. Just basically any, anything oh to run like a practical business, they did not do at all. And they did worse, you know, such as stealing money from their own employees, you know. Like if you're giving like 100 grand to somebody, this person said, I want this back. But this is for you guys at the moment to help develop a bigger industry but obviously that did not go and they had a uh, a third Third lawsuit lawsuit. yeah so this leads like so all this is like put under the rug you Mm -hmm. know gary young like somehow he just gets out of these lawsuits he does his probation he does his time and i mean he just every single opportunity he had to skirt the system Mm -hmm. he did same with his lawsuits right Mm -hmm. yep so he basically just dropped the whole act of doing all these practices. You know, he... Too much heat. Too much heat. Like, if you, I guarantee if you were to go about, you know, doing all these weird medical practices, blood, blood crystallization, he would have easily done a lot more time. Mm-hmm. So he dropped all this and referred back to a friend um, who was involved in the Tijuana Clinic talking about essential oils and how essential oils is another way to cure all these crazy diseases and whatnot Mm -hmm. this lady that introduced um gary young was a swiss woman named anna marie who brought her sick sister to his research center in mexico in 1983 seeking help Uh, she provided young with the vast materials of research research translated from french (laughs) oh my gosh about essential oils you know, and Gary Young, like, he's into, like, all these medical practices. So mm-hmm. he he received all this information and was just reading this all night long, all day. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's, like, his new fix, his new, like, yeah. how can I Focus. how can I profit off of this? Yeah, you know, like, the basically, he tried everything he could to get his birthing and mm-hmm. cancer practice to, you know, skirt around the legal system and continue operating without any sort of medical license. And once that elaborate plan in Tijuana failed and all these lawsuits came, he was like, okay, time for me to shift the tides, time for me to find a new practice. And essential oils just happened to be that new focus. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if it wasn't essential oils, it would be something else. You know, he just could, would do whatever he could to be that, you know, character like the Burroughs guy. Yes, you know? Stanley Burroughs. <laughs> what a whack job. Yeah. But, like, he already knew about essential oils to some extent. All he knew was that, I mean, the general public knew at this time that essential oils were good smelling and, you know, major food companies would put them in foods. Like, for instance, Burger King used essential oils in their strawberry milkshake. Really? Yeah. And Coca-Cola wow. would use it to flavor their drinks, too. I don't know if they still do. Yeah. But they I remember definitely used the- to. I remember that FDA said that they use very, very small Yeah, just to get, like, though. a smell or, like, yeah. a little bit of taste, you know? Yeah. But Gary Young was like, I'm going to heal. I'm going to cure cancer with these oils. Diabetes. I'm going to throw some lavender on autism, your face. Autism, just yeah. anything. Mm-hmm. All right. So, by the late 1980s, according to court records, Young started a company called Young Life International Incorporated which used a multi-level marketing plan to sell products like Colon Aid, which is Jeez. a combination of herbs, trace minerals, and herbal essential oils, which work together to help rid the body of toxins, which is so funny because it reminds me of so many of these other, like, pra- you know, this miracle like- supplement, this new thing. But this, so Young Life International was Gary Young's first MLM company, not Young Living. And apparently, even though beforehand he had seen essential oils and everything, they weren't yet his his main focus. He tried yeah. to start up another health company and another. This dude was so persistent. His other product was Liver Tone, which had essential oils, herbs, and amino acids that work synergistically to provide a health, a highly effective liver detoxification program. 
And you can find this all in a 1988 pamphlet promoting liver tone and colon aid and referred to Young as Dr. Young. Oh, geez. He didn't even get a full doctorate. Yeah. Just got all a diploma. Fake, now. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. All from fake, yeah. What a con artist. It was when Young met his third wife, the infamous Mary that we all know, at a 1993 expo in Salt Lake City that his burgeoning empire began its march towards domination in the alternative health business. Mary was a former opera singer that had previously worked at a different MLM company. So it was an MLM It's just a whole family. cluster of yeah. MLM you find in the that, blood. Yeah, yeah. Oh gosh. So Mary had previously worked at another MLM company called Sunwriter International and brought her direct selling expertise and knowledge to Young's operation. A former Young Living employee told Insider that Mary held herself out as an expert in multi-level marketing. So you have Don Young, D. Gary Young, Dr. Dr. Young, Young, whoever, however you want to call him, who had this fascination with all of these false medical claims and alternative medicine practices and cures and all of this stuff. And then you had Mary eventually Mary Young, who was an expert in MLM. So when they came together, it was kind of this like perfect recipe for disaster where they were able to really build the Young Living Empire. And that's when things really exploded. Insane. Insane. So this came from a Young Living... Young... This came from a Young Living employee um, with an interview from Business Insider saying that I think in reality, Mary was a little bit more of a manipulator of individuals, but, but I don't sense that either of them has a huge skill set other than being able to stand up on stage and kind of tell people what they want to hear. Wow. So there you have it from, from, straight from the horse's mouth. Yeah. (laughs) From an employee themselves, basically saying these people had no idea what they were doing, but they were really good bullshitters and really good con artists. Totally. Yeah, kind of a match made in heaven. Mm-hmm. Wow. And like, if you guys ever watched um, some of their videos of their conventions, it's really bizarre. It's yeah. really bizarre. On YouTube, how... we'll maybe put some clips up so yeah. people can see. Yep. Just really charismatic performers, mm-hmm. kind of ropes into the whole MLM cult thing that, you know, having these big conventions where the leaders are so charismatic just ropes in more people to become more and more devoted to this mm-hmm. whole thing. Yep, so the Young family, because they're a married family mm-hmm. now, Mary and Gary Young. Mary and Gary. <laughs> wow. Um, their embrace of essential oils was paired with increasing distrust of traditional medicine. So basically, this ropes into like all the anti-vaxxers, you know, all the people that don't really believe in going to a doctor and getting a flu shot. Mm-hmm. You know, this totally was like their realm. They knew that they could easily manipulate all these people by selling their essential oils Mm -hmm. kind of upping up these paranoia against doctors and hospitals Mm -hmm. and pharmaceutical companies kind of leaning into that whole mistrust and the broken healthcare system to be like a selling tactic for their company oh yeah and you know one of their pitches was that you know uh, diseases and whatnot cancer all these crazy like really life-threatening ailments um, was developed by doctors themselves so they can sell, you know, their their business, sell their medicine and whatnot, which is pretty funny because Gary Young is doing the same same thing. thing. And probably a lot more too. I mean, I know like a lot of medicine is expensive, but $2,000 a week for their program and diet room room and board in Tijuana, Mexico, which isn't really the greatest of places. Yeah, but even it's it's like, you know, this whole promoting this conspiracy that doctors and healthcare systems Mm -hmm. are all creating all these illnesses. It just, it leads, you know, followers of Young Living to further disassociate from modern medicine, Mm -hmm. to further, you know, X out that part of their life and turn to essential oils for everything and turn to Young Living and the company for everything. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So Gary Young said that people who lack a will to live subconsciously choose to get sick. You know, that's totally crazy. Like people who are like, 
not happy with their lives or going to get sick and whatnot. Like, yes, yeah, stress is stress leads to sicknesses and whatnot. But Gary just Young is basically to, saying yeah. that like you're depressed, you're going to get sick, well, you know, because you yeah. don't you don't want to live anymore. Just saying that serious illnesses are a choice is so offensive no. to the people that actually have them. Mm-hmm. That that they have a bad attitude or they just <laughs> don't want to live, and that's why they get sick. You <laughs> you have a bad attitude, so you're going to get cancer. Yeah, yet oh you're gosh. claiming that you cure all this stuff. If if it was really that simple, wouldn't you just say don't? don't want to get sick choose not to like wow oh my gosh so gary young claimed that when he had his clinic the largest percentage of people at the clinic were women who were between the ages of 25 to 45 who were ill because they had been browbeaten by dominating husbands and experienced a lot of confusing energy from the abuse so it seems like they wow. particularly targeted vulnerable women who yeah. were in abusive relationships to feed them all of these lies and to just basically, you know, people that he saw as being easily manipulated. Yeah, just into, like kind of, kind of like providing them a shelter, being like, this is a safe place. You can come here whenever you want, you know? Wow. That's really bizarre. So Young's demonization of the medical industry over the years had a broad appeal among people anxious to keep their families healthy and safe who are starting to doubt the medical system more and more, which is further perpetuated by all of these really bizarre things that Gary has said. Particularly, and this was kind of good timing because there was a political climate that was characterized by heightened distrust of the healthcare system and big pharma. Interesting, so considering, it all started. considering yeah. current times too right now and how we're kind of going through the same political system and mm-hmm. distrust in big pharma and the healthcare system. And an opioid epidemic that has ravaged communities and an anti-vax movement growing stronger and more feminine than ever before. So this is just at the beginning yeah. when all of this distrust is happening, the opioid epidemic is growing, the anti-vax beliefs and community is spreading, and you know, it's leading to where we are now. But I think you know, con artists like Gary Young hopped on that bandwagon to just added more fuel to the fire. Yeah, yeah. To to just all to sell their essential oils and do yet another business scheme. Because you look throughout time and they're just constantly all these different business schemes, Young Living was just the one that worked. It was just the right timing when people, (laughs) it was just the right timing when people were already starting to steer clear of modern medicine. And, Mm -hmm. you know, all of these different groups like anti-vax were kind of forming. One former employee described the company's target audience as people who were sick with no alternatives. Tragic. Shocking. I mean, it's so sick that con artists and alternative medicine practices just target. It's always, I, I say this time and time again, it's always people with cancer and pe- people with autism, particularly children with autism, because there aren't a ton of solutions. And so it's so easy to be like, but also I think the placebo effect and especially for autistic children, their parents can't always tell, you know, like, is this, you know, how is this getting better? It's it's just easy to have the placebo effect with these situations. And so it's easy to just be like, this is going to cure that and really attach yourself to desperate people or vulnerable people. Yeah. This employee says he really didn't have any educational training to speak of. He always used to like to call himself an ND, a naturopathic doctor, but he had a degree from a diploma mill. We always removed that from anything that he would write. He loved to be called Dr. Young, and we wouldn't allow him to do that because yeah. of the legalities of Young Living. It makes which just, sense. Yeah, it just shows how deranged this guy is and obsessed with being called a doctor and mm-hmm. being treated like a doctor when in reality everyone knew that he wasn't and he had no reason to call himself that. So the staff worked tirelessly to turn Young's chaotic impulses into a stable business. And uh, basically all of the, you you know, all of his eccentricity and, you know, uh, outrageous claims 
that worked in some senses, the employees had to kind of go back and erase all of the major claims, especially from documentation of Young Living so that the company itself wouldn't get in trouble. Yeah, strictly for legal issues. Yeah. And with Young and his wife um, basically controlling this market in the early 2000s, um, they attracted a lot of people, you know, sadly a lot of people from the it West Coast, you know, up. like yogis yeah. and whatnot, religious conservatives, people in rural communities who aren't as educated in mm-hmm. medical practices. Yeah. You know, they that's that was their stronghold. Yeah, and that's what's fascinating from a business perspective is that this essential oil practice drew in so many different groups of people mm-hmm. from, you know, religious conservatives to yogis and spiritual, you know, groups of people. It just drew just, in so many people. Yeah, just people who don't really believe in conventional Western medicine, in Western yeah. medicine totally. And this came from another employee saying, Young Living really ran on this one guy's personality more than in a way that anybody would be used in a serious company. So basically he just used his charisma, his his godlike appearance, his aura to sell his product, you know? Yeah. And like it's funny too because Gary Young, he wasn't really the most tallest of individuals. He was he only like I, I remember reading that he only had like a height of five eight. Wow. You know, he wasn't like that attractive either you know it was just yeah. his charisma like pure charisma yeah, yeah. yeah. kind of like the what's that one guy the oxy clean guy I, I think that a lot of it was timing with the success of yeah. young living yeah. but honestly i think a lot of it was just gary young's pure delusion because if you believe something so strongly and you're so confident about it People who might not be as confident as you might start to follow, especially if you're claiming to be this expert in naturopathy and have all this experience and you call yourself a doctor. I mean, people who are really looking for that type of figure to trust in a world where it's so hard to know what's right and what's wrong, what the right medical practice is, is this, you know, and this growing distrust in Western medicine, people, I think, wanted someone to trust. And mm-hmm. that's where Gary Young came in. Just like, I'm going to save the day. Yeah. Among the lavish products that Young poured funds into was a jousting arena in his lavender farm in Mona, Utah. So he very much had this complex of being this, like, kingpin of sorts, you know? Just a god, a king. Yeah, Yeah. so uh, just really living lavishly. He created a jousting arena decked out in medieval armor to ride against opponents carrying lances. He once proposed building a $3.5 billion amusement park and five-star hotel that was to be a quasi-religious essential oil experience. He wanted. He. I can only imagine if that went through. Just he some- was. Yeah. He literally wanted to create an essential oil empire. Like from the very start, this was always bigger than any one medical practice. It was about Gary Young becoming an icon, becoming a you know a leader, a cult leader of sorts. You yeah. know, he wanted yeah. everything to be this empire. Mm -hmm. and to build this like kingdom it's crazy because like legal systems weren't cracking down on him because although he wasn't saying that you know my lavender oil will cure your diseases he was ensuing that and therefore having his um his pawns of the mlm schemes say say the stuff you know so they'll get in trouble a little bit but young living and gary young and mary young yeah they won't get in trouble at all because they'll be like, we never said this. Yeah, and I yeah. think uh, obviously like the Young Living employees worked endlessly to cover his tracks when he did say yeah. something like that, you know? The I wish only they time, weren't so thorough. Yeah, the only time you could ever catch him saying crazy stuff like that is at the actual conventions and things like that. But when it comes to any sort of documentation or any sort of really, really solid proof of all of these claims, I mean, it's wiped clean. They did everything they could Mm -hmm. to make Young Living pass legally with a founder that was so bent on making these outrageous medical claims and making essential oils into a medical product of sorts. Super twisted. And yeah, his, his... I, his passion for power and wealth just grew and grew. At one point, he even developed a love for airplanes and bought several small airplanes. 
even though aides told him that the company couldn't afford them. <laughs> and, and a few employees confirmed this. Former employees were called young, often demanding extensive changes to the yearly convention just weeks before the event was about to take place. Are By then, the team had already been planning the event for about a year, and his demands would just increase the cost. It was just whatever he said goes, and oh. he would constantly change his mind and demand stuff. Sounds like just a nightmare boss in general, too. One source even summed up his demanding personality, saying, Last minute fireworks in an impossible arena in France where it was extraordinarily where it was extraordinarily expensive. Just blowing the budget out of the water just because Gary demanded and decided that he wanted fireworks. Literally. Literally Whatever blew it out of the water. Like, yeah. Oh my gosh. So like from what we're reading on this guy is that like you know whatever gary young said you know it was expected to move mountains in order to make this yeah. stuff happen for him you know he was a god he was the cult leader um you know whatever he said goes no matter how expensive no matter how costly you you got to make it happen yep and on another occasion actually um young ordered his staff to delay an entire cruise ship wow. so that he could stay at a location longer Wow. You know, and it was quickly responded from the captain. You just can't stop a Royal Caribbean. They've got places to be. They don't even care if you're Gary Young. The, the, the source told Business Insider. It was eventually helicoptered to his next stop. Wow. So, you know, that's, that's just like sums up Gary's charisma. You know what this guy wants. You know, he's really demanding. He is really not that logical when it comes to expenses you know it mm -hmm. felt like if he didn't have the staff that he had he would have gone bankrupt almost oh, instantly yeah. oh yeah you know it seems he's like he's not the most yeah. educated man i mean he yeah. sent money to a diploma mill to get a doctorate like come on. yeah i mean he he didn't care about money about legality of anything it was about just doing whatever he could to get from point a to point b no matter how many corners he had to cut no matter how many people he had to harm and it really felt like honestly like the state of delusion that he was paranoid in. too yeah like, in 2011 when the nuclear accident kicked off in fukushima you know the whole earthquake in japan mm -hmm. and whatnot he just blasted he just like filled up his whole headquarters and offices with essential oils in fear that you know radiation from more than 2,000 miles away is going to somehow leak into his office and just kill everyone in it wow so he thought that oils would prevent radiation the radiation from like, a 2,000 mile away from a nuclear accident in Japan that was 2,000 miles away it just it, it just shows kind of how delusional he was. I mean, honestly, his presence was so disruptive that according to three former employees, the executive management team pleaded to Mary Young to get him out of the country so that they could focus on creating <laughs> a business because he was just, you know, in this whole other world of just, you know, essential oils curing everything. and Straight delusional, like too much lavender in yeah. the guy. Yeah, just really, really out there. And meanwhile, the employees of Young Living were actually trying to create a sustainable <laughs> business and structure it well and all of that kind of stuff. So eventually, Young, Gary Young, went down to Ecuador, where the company has a farm, school, and clinic to wow. pursue his passion for farming. It just, which that whole thing sounds like a cult to me, this whole like inner society one former employee said that the day that that happened employees breathed a sigh of relief and during those years when gary young was down in ecuador staying far away from the business <laughs> the company ran smoothly it was doing well it's working out so gary young is just a figurehead at this point mm -hmm. yeah so he's just the face of it all but in reality they tried to distance the company itself from him and keep him kind of far away from the operations mm -hmm. where he was just you know, really messing things up. But Young's dominating, dom but Young's domineering style occasionally steered the company into unlawful territory. In 2017, Young Living pleaded guilty to illegally trafficking rosewood, an endangered tree from Peru, and transporting it to the U.S. 
The company was ordered to pay $135,000 to the Peruvian government in addition to a $500,000 fine and a $125,000 community service payment to the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, according to court records. Yeah. So Gary Young felt like his wisdom was superior to what laws are out there. And once again, it just throughout his entire life, even through Young Living, did not care about the law. Even if Rosewood was endangered, he was still going to get it. He was going to find a way to source it. He just, you know, would that, that was his MO. Well, like being a logger from the past, I thought he would like know a little bit better on how, you know, That's forest true. forestation and uh, logging and you know trafficking wood works you know yeah so on top of gary young you know overall just being a pretty shady guy doing multiple illegal things just blowing his budget of his empire that he created went to the point where having employees like tell him like hey you need to get out of this country dude <laughs> yeah. you know he, there's multiple you know um government type issues going on too like federal tax liens and civil judgments were filed against him between the years 1995 and 2004. Basically, the the peak and start of his young uh, living, young business. living business. Yeah, yeah, around nine years, he owed the IRS eighty thousand dollars, according to tax documents. You know, if you owe the IRS eighty thousand dollars, you're doing some pretty messed up stuff here. Mm -hmm. Just once again, overall just not doing any sort of legal obligation mm -hmm. just really having no regard for the legality of his operations or lifestyle or anything yep. he just wanted to do what he wanted to do and he didn't care what got in the way of that he didn't really understand it, finances it's think. kind of sad too because i feel like it's a larger message of millionaires and billionaires out there like totally. the wealthy elite really don't care about the rules they're the people that um do whatever they can to skirt around well, the rules they and, think they can do but mm -hmm. the irs will always find you yeah they always yeah. will but you know it's it's kind of i mean in a way a lot of these you know wealthy elite are right though because if you may if you do whatever you can to create an entire wealthy empire for yourself a, a little irs trouble is like a small blimp you know yeah. Whereas um, in, in comparison to this giant empire that you built by not following the laws and rules, you mm -hmm. know, so. But anyways, the most recent tax lien filed against him was in 2016. Wow. And this was a total of $117,000. Wow. Of course, the lien was withdrawn, though. A former employee told the Business Insider that when Young Living was in the early 2000s, the company was on the verge of bankruptcy, you know, due to his just sporadic ideas of jousting and zip yeah. lining onto stages and stuff, just really out of budget things. And mm -hmm. Young Living pretty much dug themselves into a pretty big financial hole. And they spent a lot more money and hard work trying to get themselves out of the hole. Which yeah. they pretty much did. Which the Youngs pretty much, you know, were the entire cause of. Mm -hmm. Just with all of these bizarre ways that they would spend money and just this entire lifestyle that they wanted to live. Totally. And if it wasn't really for the management team basically telling Gary Young, hey, you can't really do whatever you want. You know, I don't really care if it's about your passions or your interests. You can't do it. You know, we... They, they basically told Gary Young, you need to, you know, come up with a smart way of building this company or you're going to be more bankrupt than you've ever been. Yeah. But regardless of what the Young Living staff would plead for Gary Young to do to stop spending needlessly, to stop trying to live this lifestyle, basically the former employees and basically Boys. the former employees said that if they didn't do what Young Living wanted them to do, he would just fire them. They could find themselves out of a job. So even <laughs> though they would they would constantly be balancing between <sighs> saying, Hey, if you stop if you don't stop spending, like this company's going under yeah. and being like, Do what you want, Gary Young, just don't fire me, please. Yeah. So <laughs> whatever you say, Gary. That sounds kind of abusive if you yeah. ask me. In conversations Business Insider was repeatedly told that Young fired people if they disagreed with him. 
so only surrounding himself with yes men, which is always yeah. a huge problem. And he only surrounded himself with yes men who could validate what they saw as his nonsensical ideas. So if you weren't up for all of these crazy delusions and ideas of grandeur and, you know, just really expensive and compulsory decisions, uh, you were kicked out, you know? Yeah. It was either go with the flow or get out. They said employees deliberately tried to keep their heads down and off of Young's radar, fearful that they could be the next ones out the door. I would just quit, man. An employee said, I sense that I kind of understand what goes inside the White House, referring to President Donald Trump's <laughs> management style. You have a little bit of an egotistical person that when they say stuff, that's the way it is. And to some extent, the ends justify the means if they really believe what they're saying. Mm. That kind of summed up Gary. Whether it made sense or not, or whether it had a basis in fact, was just irrelevant. Whatever he said goes, and if you are not with him, then you're against him. And mm. I think that a lot of really egotistical, self-centered people see it that way. Yeah. And it's sad because a lot of them end up successful. For real. <laughs> really makes you think. <laughs> It was funny too is so like Gary Young, like the way he went about his business, like if you want to make a commercial, want to make anything, they would just like have everything for him and he would record, he would say whatever he wants to say, which I'm sure he said a lot of things that were false. Yeah. And basically this, the members, the employees edited out a lot of claims yeah. that Gary Young was making. Wow. Which I'm sure, I just wish they just left a couple of big bits unedited. It yeah. would have been so so juicy to I read. Had to constantly to watch. cover his tracks and oh, all these so claims. Stressful. Yeah, it's like a it's like a, you're walking a baby. Yeah, and but the thing is, if you think about it, all of these crazy claims that he would say and and all of that really created the legacy within mm -hmm. Young Living because all of the distributors make those same claims. Yeah. So even though to the outside appearance, legal-wise, Young Living was able to steer clear, Gary Young still embedded this mentality of this alternative medicine, essential oil, cure-all practice. Mm -hmm. Another crazy story from, you know, of course, these are all from former employees that, you know, went on to... Um, conferences you know meetings with business insider discussing how bizarre how yeah their yeah. experience you know parenting gary uh, gary young <laughs> yeah. so one instance was that in a promotional video they brought a bear a live bear to gary's shoot wow and gary claimed that it was you know the shoot was as safe as possible and the funny thing is they kept the bear 15 feet away from gary yeah, they edited the electrical fence and all the precautions out of it to make it look like Gary Vee was just some god. Once it was, again, it was he really wanted great. to be seen as a god, I yeah, think. Yeah. As a, just, you know. But, like, when that video came into question, Gary Young would say that the bear had licked oils off of his hand. You know, just making these crazy, just, like, tall tales, you know? Yeah. You just wonder, and, and what's the weirdest thing about it is that Young Living reps genuinely see him as this like amazing person and people are just allowing him to get away with these claims even after he's gone which we'll get into it's just so bizarre that even to this day young living reps still see gary young as this wonderful incredible figure yeah. and and still follow him as if he's this genuine teacher of essential oils mm -hmm. so everyone is just going along with everything he says, allowing him to get away with these very, very dangerous claims and just delusions and stories and just all of this. He's a snake oil salesman yep. but that people have lifted up and perpetuated all of these notions of his. It's so crazy. And like the employees need to keep in mind too that you know, at this time in Gary Young's life, he has 6 million members with him. Wow. You know, 6 million people that... Whatever Gary Young says is true. Whatever Gary Young does is they true. They just follow him. You know, a bear licks oils off his butt cheeks. It's true. It happened. No falsified. Yeah. Just you know, it's, follow it's him really bizarre. So a former employee recalled how during a convention, Young was anointing babies backstage with frankincense oil. 
just basically acting like he's some giant celebrity being like here take my baby dump my baby with frankincense over their heads it's just it's really bizarre he's not even yeah. ministered yeah like, he can't even do religious things like that i don't even know if like religious people put frankincense on their babies Boys. yeah i mean i know that like you know from my um netflix video on uh unwell yeah unwell uh, a lot of people talked about frankincense in the bible and and you know dr z the z man believing, z. i think which <laughs> funny enough you know, um, who did Gary Young follow again? Uh, water oh, guy. Stanley Burroughs? Yeah, so funny enough, Gary Young followed Stanley Burroughs. I think Dr. Z in the Unwell really? docuseries is following Gary Young because he also calls himself a doctor and <sighs> has a lot of this similar stuff that he says My about guy. how frankincense is in the Bible, therefore essential oils are in the Bible and all of this stuff. It's really interesting. Do you know what was in the Bible? Beheadings. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's a good point. You know, so many bad practices were in, like, previous states, you know, where yeah. we just, like, are logical now to be like, oh, this isn't cool. Yeah. You know, we can't be doing this anymore. Oh, yeah. yeah. But... And that's, like, the most bizarre thing is when people are like, oh, this is ages, you know, this is this has been practiced for thousands and thousands of years because, you know, my ancestors' ancestors used to do this, like... Just because they did it doesn't mean that it was good, good for, you. for you. Yeah, you know? but I think that a lot of, um, you know, these types of con artists like Gary Young um, capitalize off of religious beliefs and oftentimes yeah. rope it in to try and take people who want to be good Christians or who want to be like, you know, religious followers, uh, basically trying to rope them into thinking that this alternative medicine practice or whatever it is they're selling goes along with this person's religious like beliefs. Jesus approves. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Gary Young claims himself to be a deeply religious man involved with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, a.k.a. Mormonism, but decided to part ways because he felt he had his own personal guidance and didn't need to rely on an organized religion aka was creating his own organized religion. Yeah, that's for real. He heavily incorporated religion into his company, though. He sold an Oils of Ancient Scripture set for over $200 that included 10 of the most significant oils from the Bible wow. and seemed to believe he was on a mission from God to bring essential oils to the world. What, and, and just roping in that religious aspect creates a cult-like following, I yeah. think, as well. He yeah. literally yeah. S sold himself as this, like, messenger from God to spread essential oils to the people. Like, that's so dangerous. And there was definitely a cultish following around him, which is how one former employee described it. Young's message was, we are here to heal the world. This is what God used to heal mankind for thousands of years. This is what prophets used in the Bible. And we are here to bring back the wisdom of God's medicine on earth. That was how Gary Young described essential oils. Jeez, dude. Like that is, in, like, that is just really on a whole other level. And to vulnerable people who are looking for something like that, to believe that not only are essential oils beneficial in this new emerging alternative medicine practice, but to believe that basically people within Young Living are prophets here to bring back the wisdom of God's medicine, essential oils, nah, it's dude. just <laughs> a whole other level. Yeah, that's really bizarre. And like, he knows he can do this because his majority followers are conservatives and religious people you know yeah. you could be like oh it's really it's yeah. really crazy to think about yeah totally while young portrayed himself as the patriarch of a wholesome loving godly family knitted together by the healing properties of his oils former employees said young and his wife behaved very differently behind the scenes <laughs> who would have known who would have known according to one employee who was close to the youngs they often slept in separate quarters. The couple claimed to live an alcohol-free lifestyle, 
But staff frequently cleaned up their empty wine bottles, this person said. Two-faced much? Yeah, which is, I mean, that's sad. I mean, obviously, you know, we're not here to judge. We're not alcohol-free by any means, you know, like, and people have their relationship issues. But it definitely is problematic when you're claiming to be this, like, profit of sorts with this type of lifestyle that you're promoting. And you're just really completely a different way. You're just a complete opposite person. Yeah, it makes you think that they're only portraying this image to rope people in because they don't really care like if you look at his entire history he doesn't really care Mm -hmm. about like any of this his main message is to just find any sort of way to become a godlike figure a followed figure um, especially when it comes to healing practices and bank off of that as much as possible yeah no matter how many ethics or moral codes he breaks i mean are we really surprised that a person who killed his own daughter and um charged people two thousand dollars because their cat blood has cancer or chicken blood yeah or chicken blood. <laughs> are we really surprised that this person uh, is not who they claim to be behind the scenes i don't think so it's just really bizarre how like so many people are just like cling on to this persona of this man and like his teachings of like something so religious when when you look at his track record it's basically anything and everything to make a profit yeah yeah uh, by manipulating weak people uh not weak people but like no sick the sick the vulnerable the people who are afraid of modern medicine I, i would say those are like yeah like you know the the vulnerable the weak the vulnerable just physically weak yeah yeah they're they're at their last resort of yes, trying to get cured, and exactly. very young is at last resort. Once again, he literally said he targeted women of abuse. Yeah. You know, yeah. abuse victims. He targeted them. You know, anyone who is weakened. And, um, you know, an employee had even said that Mary and Gary had in some ways a relationship of convenience because they had a very valuable asset together, which was young living. And I think that's 100% true. If you look at Mary's strengths and Gary's strengths, when they came together, Young Living became what it was. The super, the super MLM. Yeah. So a lot of people. Still is. Yeah. So a lot of people think that, um, you know, they really just stayed in the relationship to keep that image going. Um, Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, even though Young had claimed many times that his essential oils cure cancer, Gary Young eventually died of cancer. Whoa. I, I, I don't know. To many people, that probably won't be super sad news. But, you know, it is unfortunate, I suppose. Lemon juice wasn't the way, my friend. Yeah. Gary Young's death in 2018 was yet another instance where the truth threatened to undermine the entire message that he spent his entire life building. While Young never claimed that his oils conferred everlasting life, he did claim they prevented and cured most major diseases, including cancer. Yet Young, yet Gary Young died of cancer. Too bad. It really felt like he had some more things to offer this world, you know? Yeah, I suppose. So, after Gary Young's death, May of 2018 in Salt Lake City, Utah, Mary announced to the world that he had succumbed to complications from a series of strokes. So even just saying that, you know, Young Living always says, we don't, we don't claim to cure anything. We don't, we don't do any medical claims. We don't support that. But if you feel so strongly that admitting that the founder died of cancer undermines the business to the point where you have to lie about Mm -hmm. his death, maybe you are making those medical claims within the company. But it's really bizarre, too, because Sean Young, you know, Gary Young's first son, um, claimed that Young died of cancer. You know, so Mary Young is just full of crap. She's always been from the very beginning of this episode. It's just really crazy because she's saying, oh, man was paralyzed 27 months. Doctors say... Court yeah. documents say four months. He's, he was in a wheelchair for four months. Yeah, like that doesn't even—that's not even close to each other. Yeah, I think in a lot of ways Mary kind of perpetuated his delusion and went along with it because she believed it was better for the company. But I think that's what led to just so many things in Gary Young's life and his beliefs and claims just taking a wrong turn. Yeah, yeah, it was um, documented that in the months of. Gary's death, Mary lied about his health improving as he grew sicker. 
So he's like going down this slope. Mary is saying, no, he's actually doing really, really good. And Sean and his brothers said, as a result, they never got to say goodbye to their own dad. It's so sad. Yeah, I mean. I'll, although I'm not sure how close they were. I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he did divorce them while, you know, Sean was probably like 18 at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, lived lived in, in like low income housing too. I didn't mention that, really? but yeah. Yeah, wow. Donna, when Donna Young moved back to the British Columbia, you know, they were in low income housing, you know, wow. that, that refers to like, like projects or, or yeah. basically. Main, so basically, Gary Young was flying around in airplanes yeah. and his own sons were living in. Can't even have ramen for dinner. Like, wow. It's really, it's really messed up. I don't know how it is now, but that's how it portrays, you know. Yeah. So Mary Young didn't really specify the claims made in the story. You know, she was just basically saying he died of a series of strokes. Mm-hmm. Some family members uh, say that they were even barred from the funeral of Gary Young. You know, they couldn't even go to like their own like relative dads or um, whatever relation they had with Gary. They couldn't even go to their funeral. funeral. Yeah. And according to what this says right here, Gary Young's funeral was pretty intense. So it was on a cloudy Friday afternoon, you know, of course, May 2018, on his lavender farm in Utah, where they got to say their final goodbye. Young's funeral was an elaborate affair of a three-hour dedication to his life that included a, um, a series of cowboys on horses, you know, five bagpipers and three drummers just playing, you know, the whole time in their plaid kilts. To like I forgot what the song song is, but you know that one bagpipe song that they play. Yeah, <laughs> that one. And Gary Young, um, Gary Young's casket was with his cowboy hat placed gently on top on a purple cart drawn by eight horses. You know, branded Young Living on it. And I'll see if I can find pictures, which will pre- be pretty crazy if I do. And like within this like three hour ceremony of life, I guess, family members, friends, and young living employees would give speeches with one royal crown diamond, observing that this man has been touched by the hands of God in a very unique and different way. And, you know, we don't want to give any disrespect for people who truly get valued Gary Young in their life. We don't want to disrespect his death, mm-hmm. but at the same time, we feel that he's done so much harm to people and was truly a dark mark on history. And, uh, you know, overall, he just really showed himself to not be a good person. So while we respect him and, you know, those that were his loved ones close in his life, we also will probably, you know, the reason why we're being kind of cold in this whole description is we just don't think he was a good person. You saw everything this man did. Yeah. You know, like, yes, he died of a series of unfortunate events, but, like, he led to the death of countless individuals, you know, yeah. by making all these false claims from, you know, his practices in Spokane, San Diego, yeah. Tijuana, his whole yeah. span of 1995 till present of essential oil, of young living uh, essential oil reps saying that, like, you going through my program and buying my product you know, you'll get your diseases cured, yeah, you know, really, it's leading to yeah. multiple deaths. And yeah. unfortunately, you yeah. think of his impact of how many people he's harmed, not just directly, but through his teachings that he spread in essential oils, he, there's probably been so many people that have been harmed through it. And he really, he was really the main figure that led to the problems with essential oils today. Mm-hmm. So Mary was often encountered with people asking, why didn't Gary just use the oils? Why couldn't he heal himself? Why is he gone? You know, it, it's kind of a little bit of a conundrum as a company built on false medical claims and cures if your own founder can't heal, heal himself, himself yeah. with these essential oils. But Mary couldn't answer that question. She did say after his near fatal accident when he was 24, he was supposed to die, but he didn't. That was her only explanation for that his was death. His, that was his uh, second chance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, Mary ends up saying, I believe by the grace of God, we were given another 40 years to be with Gary Young. 
we were given the opportunity to be blessed with the knowing he had, with the knowledge that he had. That's weirded a little. Yeah, weird it's a little bit weird. But those are words from the genius MLM marketer, Mary herself. Young herself. I mean, honestly, she seems to be like a really great, com- like she, she, I think she was the company structure force. Yes, yeah. Gary know? was just a Gary face. Gary couldn't keep his shit together <laughs> yeah, enough to pretty much, create man. a company like that. Jeez. The funeral was live streamed on YouTube and had over a hundred thousand people which tuning I, in from across the world. Yeah, which I did find and we'll show like little bits of clips too. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Two people who weren't allowed to attend, though, were Gary's son and daughter from his second marriage. Really? According to Matthew oh, Young, okay. which is the marriage that he had while he was running his Tijuana clinic. Yeah. He said he had no idea why his staff... Oh, well, there it Hi, Katie. <laughs> I'm sorry, you can't come up here. He, Matthew Young said he had no idea why his half-siblings couldn't go to their father's funeral. Wow. According to documents obtained by Business Insider, Young filed a petition for a protective order against his son, Adam, in March 2018, months before he died. The reason for requesting the order is unclear, and court records indicate it was denied, which is really bizarre. You have to wonder what his son, Adam, knows, possibly, <laughs> that Gary I Young doesn't want crap. getting yeah. out there. Yeah. Well... We'll see. You yeah. know, Gary Young died 2018. We're only in 2020 right now. Yeah, we'll probably I see. wonder if information will yeah. come out if more we, about If it. we find out, we'll do a follow-up video. Yeah. Definitely. Matthew Young, looking back at his father's funeral, described the event as a grand and very public event. He said it felt more like a display, and he wished it could have been a little bit more formal or probably personal. He added that during the funeral, some people who were close to his father approached him and said his dad had spoken highly of him. That, him said, made him feel good during those difficult times, which is great. Yeah. I wonder if there's their children ever, like, are participating in the essential oil yeah. or they just inherited money. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have to... I, Mary I, is still alive. Yeah. Mary is still alive. Yeah. Kicking. I mean, I think that, you know, a lot of the issues with this whole company really stemmed from Gary Young. And I'm wondering, I, I'm hoping at least that the company shifts to a more ethical stance uh, after his death. It's been two years though, and it doesn't seem like it's quite there yet, though they are trying to distance themselves from false claims that really made their company what it is. Yeah, As this is pretty crazy too, what we're about to get into. It's a little bit backtracking of What's said to be Gary Young's biggest regret. So one of the last things we'll discuss in the podcast today is Gary Young's biggest regret, which is a really interesting story that I didn't know about. Yeah, it's really crazy. And after my coffee, (laughs) it's currently 11 o'clock right now. I'm drinking coffee. We'll see how this goes. Okay, so getting into Gary Young's biggest regret. So, I fear you. I fear. <laughs> it's getting towards the end. I get tired. Harder to speak. Hold the harder to speak. A few years before Gary Young died, he made um, a trip to Quinzel, British Columbia. I'm pretty sure I said it right, but he pretty much made it to the heart of British Columbia. Um, where his previous family lived, you know, his first marriage, yeah. Donna Young, you know, and his six kids. Um, and he went there to go visit them, you know, just like kind of be there, you know, yeah. just like do like a, like, I don't know, like a 20 year checkup. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> no. <laughs> one night during dinner, um, Gary Young said that his biggest regret was that he didn't spend enough time with his family and telling his kids that he wanted to make it up to them. It always sounds like a honestly degenerate dad when they're always like, oh, I didn't spend enough time with you, but I want to make it up. And you're just kind of like, okay, well, you haven't been here. It's a little too little too late. Yeah, I mean, money can't really replace, you know, like... A father. Yeah, totally. I mean, maybe a little, but... Yeah. You know, just like, people need family, man. Yeah. So, less than a year before Gary died, he spoke to his son Matthew to move to Utah and finally work for him and his uh, company. 
Matthew said he persuaded his wife and son to leave their life in Canada and to start a new at Young Living Company. Wow. So Matthew, his uh, son, is involved in the company, apparently. Matthew said that, I keep telling my wife that I want to start doing something. I want to start getting into it. I want to carry on my dad's legacy. And not as a distributor, actually carry on with what he intended. What so, did Gary Young intend? That's Gary the question. Gary intended to scam as much people and make the most profit so he can have elephants pilot airplanes while going down the uh, Bermuda Triangle. That's yeah. Gary Young's intention. Yeah, it really feels like there. there's no... With all of Gary Young's ventures, there isn't really that much of a common core theme besides promoting bizarre health, you yeah. know... Uh, products and claims you know yeah yeah, there besides that what's his legacy Mm -hmm. you know Uh, but sadly before matthew was about to move to utah to pursue this legacy gary young died and matthew said that i have a lot of frustration and anger towards my brothers down there matthew told business insider about his father's death they were all standing around our dad dad's beside while he was taking his last breath and they couldn't pick up a phone and tell us until after he passed. And they were standing there for weeks. And Sean, you know, the oldest, agreed. He said that Mary is such a shady person that she would rob us of the opportunity of being with our dad with his last moments. I think she lied to the public because of the way um, Young Glovin claimed that they can fix everything. You know, indirectly claimed. You know, she was worried it would ruin Young, living, young Living's reputation. So, mm-hmm. so she valued business over family. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Years earlier before this, Young and one of his colleagues, Mark Schroeder, in 2008, were in Nairobi, Kenya, when Schroeder asked Young a rather perplexing question. Gary, he recalled asking, where do you draw the line between family and your mission? Right now we are sitting here in this cafe in Nairobi. You haven't been home in three weeks and don't tell me your family doesn't miss you. How do you cope with that? The question hung in the air and at first Gary didn't respond instead of looking down. You're right, he finally said. It's about weighing the importance of each one and I don't have an answer. Apparently, Gary Young was a passionate man who loved his oils and loved his company. He lived life on the edge, as we know, traveling the world, relishing his time spent outdoors, and building an empire around his eccentric personality and unquenchable desire for greatness. And for the company's millions of members, Young did accomplish everything he strived for. He is revered, beloved, and, in their minds, will forever be the father of essential oils. But for tons of people who were involved with Young and his company over the years, that drive came at a steep cost. As his own sons acknowledged, while Young loved his family, his work was his life. Crazy, crazy. So to basically summarize uh, Gary Young's life, um, former CEO of Young Living, Doug Nelson, said that Young's life of poverty to riches, of fortune, fame, and great deal of loss in some ways mimicked that of a Western dime novel. It's the American dream that we all want. You start low, make it high, and die low. Yeah. Yeah. Basically how it happened for Gary. Yeah. Fact, truth, and myth are often blurred going both ways, Gary, um, not Gary, Doug Nelson said. I think Gary wanted it that way. He had an amazing and interesting life, but always wanted it to be more, more of everything. He wanted and perhaps needed to be everything his mind could imagine and his heart desired. All, all was possible to Gary because he became a master of creating his own reality, as we've discussed before, you know, yeah. just lavish expenses, last yeah. minute decisions from years of party planning. I think we you know? live in a society, too. We live in a society. <laughs> knowledge (laughs) but i think we live in a society where that's possible now through social media through um through just the way that news spreads the way you can create your own kind of 
company culture and MLM cult like following, you can really create your own reality. Life is what you make it, mm -hmm. but that can have a sinister undertone when you look at stories like Gary Young. He basically abandoned his family to be Pursue rich. Greatness. Yeah, yeah and it's be basically revered. like a yeah. contract with the devil. You yeah. Know? All right, so that's the full story of Gary Young. We've seen so many, you know, clips and videos that cover parts, you know, like Gary Young's daughter's death. But we really wanted to go into his entire story, his entire history, because I think when you actually look at all these little details, the bigger picture becomes a much more sinister one and makes, a lot more fascinating. Makes a little bit more sense. Like, mm -hmm. not enough people go into, like, how it all started, how it became, they basically just go into just points. MLM reps, you know, yeah. just like Young living in a in a hole. Yeah, you know, but once but you understand Gary Young, the founder, you understand that MLM reps and their actions so much oh, more yeah. and their, you know, apprehensible actions. And I think overall, the story of Gary Young is even more so a cautionary tale of the American dream and yeah. when it can go wrong. When, you know, when your illusion, delusions of grandeur become too large and people actually start believing in them. We see so many other figures that have gone down similar paths, like Kanye West, for example. A lot of Same. people feel Donald, Donald Trump is a good example as well. And uh, those, it, it seems like a lot of those can lead to really dangerous outcomes. And so I think Gary Young is overall a message about America and, you know, the way that people accumulate wealth in the society that we have today. Totally. And so I hope you guys enjoyed this very first podcast episode. It's probably a little rocky at times as, <laughs> you know, Riley gets comfortable in the camera and everything. Please go easy on him. This is his first time ever doing Thank this. Thank you. He did all the research for this, which was so impressive. And yeah, I hope you guys <laughs> enjoyed it. I had so much fun and yeah. it was just awesome being able to be a little bit more chill and have a little bit of a more relaxed environment. Yeah, and just something to like plug in as you're driving somewhere, road tripping. Because yeah. like when we drove from New York to... Uh, Colorado where we live now we pretty much Podcasts. we didn't really listen to much music we yeah. listened to like Mile Higher podcast which is a good podcast really different good. commentary yeah. channels H3, H3 yeah you know just different types of podcasters and a little bit Joe Rogan no no yeah no. Um, but yeah so I think you know, we, we hope that you guys enjoyed this. It's 11.11. Hey. And if you have any recommendations for anything you'd like to see us cover in a podcast format like this, please leave it down below. Mm -hmm. If you made it this far, should we have them comment something? If comment. you made it this far, comment what you, you decide. You decide. Pineapple pizza. Yes, uh, that's yeah. going to be so confusing for people who are watching for the first time. Pineapple time. pizza. Yeah. But if you made it this far, please comment pineapple pizza. Um, <laughs> it, it'll be really interesting to see how, many, how many people, people just made it. Made it. Um, um, we appreciate you guys. Yeah. You did. And also, too, we're going to start developing merch and stuff for yep. you guys if you want to rock some Cruel World stuff. Um, yep. Uh, I'm currently working on a Discord for all members that want to be in it. It's pretty yeah. cool right now. I just got to make sure it's not like hackable, I guess. Yeah, you and know, we're thinking like, about starting a Patreon or YouTube yeah, yeah. membership to fit with that Discord mm -hmm. so that the people who have been so kind and supportive um, can, you know, further support us if you yeah. want to, you know. Because your likes, subs, mentions, all the above, it motivates us to keep doing what we're doing. Yeah. So if you guys enjoy that, definitely f like refer a friend. Like, yeah. Post on your story and we'll post it on our story. Oh, you yeah. Know? We should probably pre create a podcast Instagram. We'll yeah. probably do that yeah, we'll eventually at some point, definitely too. Definitely do that. Yeah. But thanks, guys, for uh, watching our first podcast. Or listening. Yeah. And we'll catch you in the next one. Ciao. I'm out. All right.